to show you how to make slutty brownies. Now, before you run away and think, what the hell are they? Um, I'll quickly tell you, it's very simple. It's like a brookie. So you've got a cookie base, you've got a brownie bit, and then you've got a slutty middle, which is just like Oreos, but supposedly Oreos are slutty. I don't really get the name. I don't even know what I think about the name, but that's what they're called. So we are gonna go with it. So this recipe is a mix of a few of my recipes, all molded into one indulgent, delicious thing. And yeah, I will pop um, a ingredients and recipe in the description below if you wanna check that out. But without further ado, let's get into showing you the ingredients for slutty brownies. So in terms of ingredients, it will seem like there's quite a lot, but that's because there are a few layers to it. So. Firstly, this is the cookie bar layer, which is the base layer. So you will need some butter. Um, if you were dairy-free or vegan, then you would need to change this to like a, a dairy-free baking block or vegan butter, whatever you choose. Um, chocolate chips, the same if you are dairy-free, if you're vegan, low FODMAP, you'd need to change these to dairy-free, but I've just got a mix of dark white and milk here. Then I've got some gluten-free plain flour. I've got a mix of caster sugar and light brown sugar. I have got some corn flour or cornstarch. If you don't have this, you can just really leave it out, but I always put it in cookie bars. Got vanilla extract. I have got some bicarbonate of soda, um, and I have got an egg, which obviously, if you're egg-free or vegan, you'd need to replace this, but considering it's only one egg, it's fairly easy to, with a flax egg, um, or aquafaba, something like that. So no problem with that. So that is layer number one. Layer number two is really, really simple. It's just one ingredient. It is these Oreos or cookie and cream biscuits because obviously Oreos are not gluten-free, but lots of places do their own version. So these ones are gluten-free. They're also dairy-free. They're also vegan. So they are perfect. Um, so yeah, you just need pretty much a packet of these. You can use a bit more than a packet if you want or a bit less, or you can actually completely leave these out and just make these brookies, which is just the cookie and the brownie. But this is the this is the slutty part so i recommend you keep them in last but not least here are all the ingredients for the very top layer which is the, the brownie layer so i've got some um dark and milk chocolate here so if you were vegan or dairy free or low format you just need to change this to a dairy free chocolate um, i like to do a mix of milk and dark but it doesn't really matter the more dark probably the better don't go all milk i find you can't taste the dark if you don't like dark chocolate it's fine um, then I've got some butter here, which I'm going to melt. This, if you are um, dairy-free, vegan, you need to change this again to a vegan butter or dairy-free baking block. Then again, same with the chocolate chips, as I said earlier, dairy-free and vegan, low format, blah, blah, blah. Um, also, I forgot to say that when I'm going through these, I always don't mention that you need to change the butter to anything dairy-free if you're low FODMAP. That's because butter is fine for low FODMAP because of the lactose content. So there you go. Um, I have got a small amount of flour and then I have got some cocoa powder which if you were dairy free or vegan just make sure that it is definitely dairy free because not all cocoa powders are. Um, this flour also is gluten free plain flour, I'm not sure if I mentioned that. Then I have got some caster sugar and then I have got two eggs which this is the one point, there we go, not focusing, doesn't want to focus on the eggs. I've got two eggs, this is the bit where I'm you know, if you are vegan, I'm not entirely sure what the best substitute is for these because I haven't tried, but I'd imagine with it only being two eggs and they're two medium eggs, that flax egg replacement would be fine or an egg replacer um, that you can buy like in a packet or even aquafaba. So it is generally quite easy to make this all vegan as well as being dairy-free, gluten-free and low FODMAP. It's pretty much a recipe for anyone who wants a slutty brownie. So um, yeah, that's all the ingredients. Let's get started. So firstly for the cookie dough base, we need to add our sugar to a bowl and our melted butter, and then mix that together until it's really well combined and kind of stiff in texture. Then add your egg, vanilla extract, and again, mix that together until really well combined and you can no longer see any egg at all. Then we're gonna add our flour, our corn flour, and our bicarbonate of soda, which hopefully you can get out of the dish better than I could. I was struggling, but we got there in the end. And then mix that all together until you can no longer see any flour at all again. Um, and yeah, no white, and it just looks like cookie dough, just like this. Then we wanna add 
the best ingredient, which is chocolate chips. So you've got milk chocolate chips there, got white and dark, but you can do whatever you want. And then add it into your prepared tin, which mine's a square tin. Use a spoon at first and then push it in with your hands. And then we're gonna put this in the freezer to freeze for about 15, 20 minutes. Then we're gonna make our brownies. So you need some chocolate in a bowl, some butter, melt that in the microwave and keep stirring it every sort of 15 to 30 seconds so it doesn't burn. And then you'll have completely melted chocolate, which you wanna to leave to go to about room temperature before you use it with the rest of the ingredients. So now add your eggs to a bowl and some caster sugar and then mix that together until it's kind of mousse-like. It's sort of thickened up and gone quite pale in color. Um, you'll know when it's ready. It takes a little while, so I recommend using an electric ham whisk. Then we're gonna add our room temperature chocolate and butter melted mixture. And you wanna fold this in um, so that it, initially it kind of marbles and then it goes to a pure heavenly chocolate color. And it's kind of thickening a bit, but not thick enough. So we're gonna add our flour into this and then also add our cocoa powder for a little bit of extra chocolate kick and fold that in really carefully so that you don't lose any of that air that you whisked into your eggs earlier. Then obviously we wanna add more chocolate chips, a mixture of all different ones. So we've got the dark, the milk and the white, and that's ready. But what we need to do first is we need to get our cookie dough out of the freezer and add loads and loads of Oreos to the top. Try and fill in all the little gaps with just broken up bits of Oreo. And then you can pour your brownie mixture on top of it. Spread this all the way to the sides so that you've got no gaps. Basically, you don't wanna see any cookie dough, you don't see any Oreo, you just wanna see brownie. So spread that with a palette knife, and then if you want, you can add some extra chocolate chips because we want chocolate in every layer of this. Then pop it in the oven to let it do its thing, and you've got the most epic slutty brownie, but make sure you let it cool before you cut it. Right, so they are all baked. They are all cooled. Very, very important that you leave these to cool because Brownies and stuff just need cooling time. It makes such, such a difference. And I know that you wanna see what the finished product looks like. I'm gonna bring this in and it will need to focus because there are lots of layers that need to be seen properly. So let's see if it will focus. There we go. So there, you can see the bottom layer, cookie. Then you can see the white of that Oreo or gluten-free Oreo as it is. Um, in that central layer and then you've got the brownie top and then on top you've got chocolate chips i mean it it's just it's just the business isn't it it's just good um i'm really really happy with them and i mean beside the name which is i don't know it's a bit weird they are just epic they are like the ultimate mix of if i mean if you like cookie bars and you like brownies and you kind of like oreos as well then why would you not want this it's it's indulgent, it's definitely indulgent. It's not your, literally I'm gonna have one of these every single day of my life sort of thing. But it's one of those things that makes you so like happy and you smile with every bite. Um, so yeah, as I said at the beginning, the recipe will be in the description below if you want to make them yourself because you really should. I mean, they're really, really simple and they taste good and they don't taste gluten free. It's nothing I make tastes gluten-free. I don't even know what that means anymore, tasting gluten-free, because it doesn't have to. Gluten-free definitely, definitely doesn't have to taste gluten-free. Um, yeah, if you've enjoyed this video and want to watch more videos like this, then click up here to watch my banana bread recipe video and click up here if you want to watch my jam donuts recipe video. And I will see you in the next video. Bye!